All right, welcome to video number two. Oh, let me adjust this. I want to turn it a little bit here. Um, okay, so in this video, we're gonna we're gonna talk about evaluating limits uh, that where x is approaching uh, one of the infinities, positive infinity, negative infinity. This this approach can actually work for both. Um, so you might already have an intuition about how to deal with this because you might have used this in pre-calculus because the reality is like this question is actually sort of asking us like, well, where is there a horizontal asymptote if there is one? So like as you head off to the right really far, the left really far, is it just, you know, getting bigger, smaller, or is it like approaching a particular value? Um, so you, you might have heard of some methods where you get to sort of neglect the the slow functions, the, the slower terms. Um, basically, in other words, like, you can sort of say, like, well, two and one don't really matter because, like, we're thinking infinity. So, like, these terms here, when you're squaring, you know, a one followed by a hundred zeros and then multiplying it by five, like, adding one to it didn't really change the magnitude of that. And then, like, you can play the same game for the next one. The question is, like, why can you do this? Um, and so we can actually use some of our restructuring skills to help us out with this. The restructuring skills aren't as obvious as um, like what we did in class. So we like, you know, we factored and expanded. This one's a little less obvious as to like, well, wait, I wouldn't have thought to do that. And that's fine. You didn't have to think like, oh, I totally would have done that. Uh, but I think it's important that you think about like, oh, I know why that works. I get that, okay? Uh, because the expectation would be that like you you show me uh, answers in this sort of method and not just going like cross off, cross off and walk away. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So we want to evaluate this limit. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it. The limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared minus x minus 2 all over 5x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay. Okay, so we have the original limit there. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna compare each of the terms to the fastest growing um, power of x. So in other words, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to multiply the numerator by one over x squared and the denominator by one over x squared. So I'm just multiplying by a fancy looking one same thing, something divided by itself is always one. But the reason I'm gonna do this is it gives me an opportunity to sort of see, well, what, what happens to the terms as x goes to infinity? And I can use my number sense after that to sort of think about it. So let's, let's go ahead and rewrite this a different way. So now I'm interested in what is the limit as x approaches infinity of three x squared over x squared minus x over x squared, minus two over x squared. <clears throat> so I distributed that division of x squared to each term in the numerator. And then now I'm gonna do the same thing in the denominator. So five x squared over x squared, plus four x over x squared, plus one over x squared. Okay, <clears throat> so now that I have that, I can actually do some simplifying before I continue and start thinking about my number sense, because uh, I have x's in the numerator and denominator that will reduce. Uh, if it didn't come up already in class, then here's my opportunity to say that I don't like the word cancel, uh, because we use it to describe a lot of things. So I like to use what we're actually doing. So like reducing or dividing is what's happening here. Um, so let's see what we get here. So 3x squared over x squared, well, that's just 3. x over x squared, well, one of those x's will divide with the other, leaving us with 1 over x. And that last term cannot be simplified any further or reduced. So, And now the same thing for the denominator. We'll get a 5 plus a 4 over x plus 1 over x squared. All right, <clears throat> so now this is where we get to use our limit laws and our number sense to help us out here. So I'm actually gonna think about the limit of each of these terms 
as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? So let's start here. The limit of three, well, it's a constant, so that's three, minus the limit of one over x. Well, as x gets really big, that starts to approach zero. So that's just zero. And then same thing here, minus, this will approach zero even faster than this one here because it's an x squared, over five is a constant, and then play the same game. As x gets bigger, four over x just gets smaller towards zero. One over x squared gets smaller towards zero. And then there you have it. The limit is three fifths, which is consistent with sort of our intuitive way of thinking about this of like neglect the slow things and then oh what are you left with well divide those and you're left with three-fifths there are also other weird like tricks if you've ever seen online like just look at the front the leading coefficients but I, I don't like tricks so uh, so yeah this is like sort of a an algebraic and analytic way of showing what the limit is and this is what we want to see in our course here we don't want to just cross off things we want to actually think about limit laws and multiplying by fancy ones. All right, so go ahead and take the survey after this and let me know what questions you have. And uh, yeah, thank you.